Once upon a time, in a Dutch village on the Zuider Zee, lived a fisherman named Rolf Brinker. The Brinkers had three children, Hans, the oldest, Gretel, his pretty sister, and the baby whose name was Jan. I'm going to tell you their story, for I know just what happened. I was there. My name is Hans Brinker. The story really begins one peaceful Sunday afternoon when my father had taken all of us for a picnic. As I sat drawing pictures of the beautiful Dutch countryside, my mother said, What a beautiful day. And we couldn't have picked a better place for a picnic. It's so peaceful and quiet. You know, Hans, all the land where we now live was once covered by water. Our great-great-grandfathers came and decided to take it from the sea. First, they built a big dike to keep the ocean back. Then they used windmills to pump the water out, so they could raise crops and build towns where the sea used to be. That's what I'm sketching now, the windmills and the dike. And they called the first dike the watcher. Because it always keeps both eyes open, watching the sea. But sometimes a storm drives the waves over the watcher, so they built a second dike. It's called the dreamer. Because it's only half awake, uh, until it's needed. But then it stands there holding the water back. There's also the third dike. It's called a sleeper. It just lies there, snoozing like our old cat in front of the fire. But if the sea ever broke to those other two dikes, the sleeper would wake and save us from being drowned. So, now you understand what we mean when we say that the Lord created the earth, but the Dutch made Holland. You must have told me that story a hundred times, yet I never tire of hearing it. And we must always keep a close watch on a dike. The sea is our friend because we live by it. But it could also be our enemy. If we're not careful, we might die by it. Let us see a drawing, Hans. Oh, well, it's not very good. Ah, that's what you always say. Well, I'm just a fisherman, and I don't know too much about art, but I think you have talent. Oh, I want to learn. I, I want to be a good artist. Then you shall be. They say a man can do anything if he tries hard enough. The peaceful afternoon turned into a stormy evening. The wind blew the rain and driving sheets. I had left our cottage for a moment to visit a friend when I heard the news. Then I ran back to our home. Father! Father! What is it, huh? I just heard that the watcher dike over at Slaughterdam is broken and they need men to repair it. Well, I better get started. May I go too, Father? Why not? But Ralph... He's so young. He's the size of a man, my dear, and it is time he began doing man's work. They say it's the worst storm in 40 years. The waves are breaking right over the seawall. Hey, let us hurry. Be careful, Ralph. I'm always careful. Don't worry about me. The line of men, all in oilskins, pushed sandbags against the dike. The sea pounded at the men on the wall, and the strong fishermen braced themselves when the torrents of water crashed over them. My father and I stood side by side in the line, lifting the heavy bags of sand and piling them one on the other. My father stood close to the edge, and as a giant wave washed down on us... Help! Hans! Help! Father! I I'm coming, Father! Ah! I swam to my father, but he was unconscious. As I pulled him toward the line of men, their hands outstretched, ready to help us, I noticed blood in my father's face. He had struck his head on a rock as he fell. A human chain stretched from the dike into the water, and when I reached a friendly hand, I knew both my father and I would be safe. It wasn't until we got my father home that I realized how serious the wound in his head really was. Hans? Yes, Mother? What did the doctor say? Dr. Kropp said fortunately the skull wasn't broken and that your father will be all right in time. But when I brought him home and put him to bed, he didn't even recognize me. Oh, that should pass soon. He will have to be in bed for a while, and the doctor will return again tomorrow morning. In the meantime, we must ask the good Lord to make your father well again soon. My father did not get better. He remained very sick. He never spoke. He looked at us, but he did not know who we were. He seldom ate. He never smoked his pipe. And of course, he couldn't work. I tried to earn enough money for the family. I fished in the summer, and when winter came, I did odd jobs and delivered wood. 
One day while doing my chores, I met Hilda von Gleck, daughter of the Burgomaster. She was my age and very beautiful. Hans Veit, I haven't seen you for a long time. How's your father getting along? Much better, thank you. He's able to sit up now. That's good. I've missed seeing you. I hope you're keeping up with your drawing. Oh, I've been much too busy fishing all summer and now doing odd jobs. Oh, you mustn't give up your drawing, Hans. But there are so many artists who are much better than I'll ever be. Oh, you're too modest. My father has bought a lot of pictures, and I don't like them as well as yours. Promise me that no matter how difficult it is, you won't give it up. I'll keep on with it. It was good to see you again. Bye. Bye. And as I walked away from her, pulling my sled loaded with wood, I saw Ludwig Schimmel, son of the cheese merchant. He called Hilda and said, Hello, Hilda. Let me carry your books. That was uh, Hans Brinker you were talking to, wasn't it? Yes. It's too bad about his father, but he's getting better. Better? He's a helpless idiot. Ludwig! What a terrible thing to say. Oh, but it's true. I've seen him sitting in a window, just staring. They say he doesn't even know his own wife and children. Dr. Kropp will cure him. How can anyone cure a man who's lost his mind? I can carry my own books home. Thank you. When there were no more jobs in our town of Volendam, I went to Amsterdam to look for work. Gretel went with me and... Though she was successful selling her lace in the marketplace, I was not so lucky. Excuse me, do you know where I might find some work around here? Why don't you try the bury over there? I excuse me, do you think I could get some work here? Uh, no, all I want is strong backs and weak minds. Out of the way, boy. Avoid the rush! By your presence now for St. Nicholas Day. Uh, do, uh, do you know where I might find a job? I'll do anything. Sorry, I can't help you. Avoid the rush. By your presence now for St. Nicholas Good day, Captain. Good day. Need any hands? Sorry, all filled up, Sonny. Can I do some work? Don't bother me now, boy. It was Hilda von Gleck who brought me the good news. Have you heard about the village skating competition on St. Nicholas Day? No. Anyone 18 or under can enter, and the winners will represent our village in the big race next month. Is that the one with the, with the prize of the real silver skates? Yes, and this year, there's 300 guilders, too, for the boy who wins it. Oh, Hilda, this is the miracle I've been waiting for. But remember, even if you get in the finals, you'll be up against the best skaters on the whole Zyder Z. Oh, I know I can beat them. But you only have wooden skates. With steel skates, you could go so much faster. Well, that's all right. No matter what kind of skates I have, I'm sure I can win the race. Our village held the qualifying races on St. Nicholas Day. I didn't win the race, but I placed second, good enough to enter the final competition of the Zyder Z. And I learned one thing. My wooden skates slowed me down too much. I would definitely need steel skates to compete with the swiftest skaters on the Z. But how on earth could I get them? I continued to work around the village, and, and all the time my father remained very sick. Then one day I saw Captain Jan Soon, who told me to look up a Dr. Bokeman in Amsterdam. The doctor had saved the captain's brother when everybody else had failed. So the next day I went to Amsterdam, and this time I took some sketches I had done. I hoped to sell them. While passing near the street of the art dealers, I saw a man sitting behind an easel, painting. I looked over his shoulder. Well, what do you think of it? Wonderful, sir. I've never seen anyone using oils before. Is it difficult? Yes, at first. Are you an artist, too? I hope to be someday. Now I only draw with a pencil. Oh, may I see one? Hmm. Not bad. There's a strong feeling for the land here. Is this your village? Yes, sir. I suppose you've come to Amsterdam to sell them. If anyone would want such plain sketches. Oh, the old masters often worked in black and white. 
Come, I'll introduce you to a friend of mine who has helped a lot of new artists to get started, including me. He can display your paintings, and if he sells one, you can give him a commission. Well, oh, that, that would be wonderful. I, I, I don't know how to thank you. you. You've been so helpful, and I don't even know your name. Franz Reisdale. Franz Reisdale proved to be a good friend indeed. He introduced me to Citroen, the art dealer, who accepted some of my sketches. Then he showed me the way to Dr. Boatman's house. A maid answered the door. Yeah? Is Dr. Boatman here? What is it, Martha? Doctor, this young man... Didn't I tell you I was not to be disturbed? But, sir, sir... Whatever it is you are selling, young man, I don't want. Well, I'm not selling anything, sir. It's about my father. He, he had a head injury and lost his memory. I am sorry, but I simply cannot take on any new patients at this time. Captain Yansun said if anyone could cure my father, you could. Oh, yes. I cured Yansun's brother. Very interesting case. Amnesia. Oh, you must come... You see, certain people in the town want my father locked up in an institution. They call him an idiot. You are a very persistent boy. Martha, prepare the carriage. We will take a look at your father. Uh, what did you say your name was? Brinker, sir. Hans Brinker. Dr. Bolkman examined my father and said that a brain operation might cure him. The operation was set for two weeks, the day before the big skating competition on the Zyder Z. During those two weeks, I practiced often on the canal, and more and more I learned that I would never win the race on my old wooden skates. I was determined to go to Amsterdam when my mother took my father to the hospital, and perhaps Mr. Citroen had sold one of my sketches, and with the money I could buy some skates. But I was in for a disappointment when I entered the art dealer's shop and asked, is my here Citroen around? Oh, he died two weeks ago. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Left things in quite a mess. I'm his nephew. I've had to take over the shop. Do you know if he sold my drawings? I left some here, pencil sketches. Oh, those, yeah. I'll be glad to get rid of them. They're, they're taking up space. Oh, yes, but I, I have better ones here. I the... don't want them. I'm selling out, not buying. <laughs> I left the store, and as I walked away, I passed a cripple leaning on a crutch. I walked on down the street, and a moment later heard, Stop, thief! I hurried back to the art dealer's shop and asked, Are you badly hurt? That, that cripple, he stole my money and I ran away. Stay here, I'll go after him. No, wait! As I ran after the cripple, I could hear the clerk shout, Please, stop those two! That man and that boy, they're in league with each other! Stop them both! I didn't have time to stop and explain. I chased the beggar down the street. He turned into an alley. I followed. He darted along the canal and then leaped over a wall. I scrambled after him and found myself in a dingy passageway between two buildings. I caught sight of him far ahead, turning a corner. I ran to the corner and looked around. I couldn't see him. I started down the sidewalk and suddenly... It was dawn next day when I awoke. I was groggy and I was stiff and sore from sleeping in the cellar where I'd fallen after the thief ambushed me and hit me on the head. I made my way to the nearest police station to report what had happened and, and there was the clerk and my friend Franz Rysdale. Here he is. This is the boy I was telling you about. Then he wasn't a partner with a thief? Of course not. His name is Hans Brinker. I thought I recognized him from your description and when I saw the sketches he had dropped when he chased the thief, then I was certain. Hans, are you all right? We've been looking for you all night. Oh, I I'm fine. I I guess. My head hurts a little. Oh, some warm food will take care of that. And the reward my friend here will give you. Reward? Yes. You slowed down the thief enough so that the police were able to catch him two hours ago, just before he was about to ship out on a freighter. That's why we're down here, to identify him. Well, I'm glad you caught the real thief, but I don't need a reward. Of course you do. Would five guilders be enough? Well, well, yes. Thank you. I, I was hoping to buy a pair of steel skates, and five guilders would certainly help. I know where there's an excellent pair of skates for seven guilders, so my friend here will raise the reward to seven, uh, won't uh, you? Uh, uh, I, I will? Of course he will. 
Hans, the steel skates are yours. We bought the skates as soon as the shop opened, and Franz took me to the starting line of the race. As I adjusted my new skates, I heard the judge say, You will begin a long-distance race of 26 miles across the Zyder Zee to Amsterdam and return. I expect every one of you to finish, whether he wins or not. Oh, Hans! Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I was worried about you. Are you all right? What happened? I'll tell you after the race, Hilda. That is, after I win the race. Oh, I know you'll win. Good luck. Starters, take their places. You will begin at the sound of the horn. After that, everyone for himself. And may the best holiday win. <laughs> glided over the smooth ice on my new skates. A boy from Horn took the lead, and Ludwig Schimmel from our village was close behind me. It was Ludwig who called my father an idiot. We crossed under an old stone bridge and onto the canal. We skated along the Zyder Zee until we approached Amsterdam. Then Ludwig put on a burst of speed and passed me. But it was a long race, and I saved my strength. On a bridge near the hospital stood my mother. Hans, the operation was a success. Your father is out of danger. The good news gave me strength and I began skating with new heart. As we raced under the Royal Bridge, I put on speed. I neared Ludwig and he suddenly veered into me, sending me sprawling across the ice on my stomach. <laughs> Why don't you learn to skate, Breaker? <laughs> when I picked myself up, all the boys were ahead of me. But as we skated onto the Zyder Z again, I began passing them. Ludwig was now in the lead. Ahead of us, a red flag marked a patch of thin ice. The group started to skate around it, but Ludwig tried for a shortcut. Instead of going around the thin ice, he skated right past the red flag. In a moment, the ice broke beneath him again. Oh, hey, darling, somebody saved me. I stopped, even though I knew it would cost me the race and the prize, 300 guineas. As the others disappeared in the distance, I, I crawled out slowly, spreading my weight so the ice would support me gave Ludwig my hand and slowly, gently pulled him out of the danger area and onto solid ice once more. We began the long journey back to our village. Hans, you and Ludwig are the last two to finish. What happened? Well, no, no, let me tell it. It was all my fault. I tried to take a shortcut across the thin ice and it wouldn't hold me. Hans pulled me out. He saved me. And Hans, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry for everything. Soon afterward, Dr. Boatman visited my father in our cottage, and he said, You are recovering so quickly, I don't think I will have to call on you again. <laughs> It's that uh, thick Dutch head of mine. <laughs> we can't thank you enough, Doctor. By the way, someone has already taken care of your hospital bills. Oh? Who was that? Uh, Herr Schimmel. He, he said it had something to do with Hans and his son. I have saved up some money and hidden it away, Doctor, uh, so we can pay your fee. My fee? Ah, uh, uh, yes. My, my fee is this painting here. But that's one of my paintings. I know, and I won't take anything less, because someday a genuine Hans Brinker painting is going to be worth a lot of money. You see, Hans, the doctor agrees with me. You can be a great artist someday. Well, that's the end of the story. I didn't win the race, but we won far more health for my father, the friendship of Ludwig, the respect of the village, and, oh yes, um, a great big kiss from Hilda von Gleck.